Where's my purse? Welcome to the Chaos Lovelies. This is a podcast for women with ADHD. I am currently pursuing an official diagnosis, but the therapist I've been working with did do an assessment, and I definitely have it. And I have to say, not really a surprise. (laughs) Anyway, join me every week as I attempt to make sense of this new information and find the benefits and the humor of being ADHD. If you'd like to help out the show, there is a link in the show notes to become a sponsor. If you join, I'll give you a shout out during the next episode. Any support would be greatly appreciated. I've got some big ideas for the future and every single subscriber helps so much. Anyway, let's get to it. So in recent ADHD adventures, I have misplaced my keys to the studio. (laughs) Now I have been tempting fate for the last four months. It was a small key and I never got around to finding some kind of keychain for it. I kept it in a zippered pocket on my purse, which until recently, I only kept that key in. But then I started putting other things in there. And today, I managed to walk around all day with that pocket unzipped. So, the key could literally be anywhere. I honestly don't know how I lose as many things as I do, and quite a few of them are just never found. (laughs) The oddest one was when my kids were younger and they had their first Nintendo DS. They were lectured about not losing it, being really careful, but of course it disappeared, right? And we've gone through several of them since then, including one that got dropped in the driveway and run over. It's an ADHD household, what can I say? (laughs) But that first one was missing for over a year. And then one day, I put my hand into the ripped lining of my workout bag, and guess what I found? (laughs) I obviously apologized to the kids, and they were super psyched because that was right after the other one had just been run over, (laughs) so they got one back. Thankfully, they have learned to take better care of their things. (laughs) So this next part of the episode is something that I didn't think I was ever going to have to deal with. And also something that when I thought about the possibility of it happening, I thought that if it did, I was going to be really, 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 really upset. So I think I was ditched by my therapist. (laughs) And I'm surprisingly okay with it. So I know I've mentioned my recent struggles with getting my medications adjusted and that my therapist was super helpful in that moment. The meds are working great, and I am feeling so much better. Honestly, I think it has a more obvious effect on my ADHD. My mind is a lot calmer and quieter, and I can focus so much better. But just having, like, less noise in my head definitely helps. So anyway, all of that happens. Finally get my meds, whatever. The next week ended up being just insanely busy. We are down to two cars uh, because we brought my son's car in, and... They basically said, yeah, you should not drive it. So now we're down to two cars for four of us that always need to be in like four different places. So I had to spend one particular day just shuffling people back and forth, trading cars for various reasons. And it was a lot. And I spent all day doing it. And it was also the day that I was supposed to have therapy. So I canceled. Well, I didn't really cancel. I asked her if I could reschedule, you know, and told her what was going on. But she is kind of overbooked, so usually if I have to reschedule, it's more of a cancel situation. Now, I will say that I have done this kind of thing before, and I used to make up reasons for why I was canceling because I used to think that I had to lie when I just wasn't feeling up to it, which is another thing that bothered me my whole life about having this, like, anxiety and, you know, I didn't know it at the time, but this ADHD and just like sometimes just not being able to do something, but you can't just tell somebody like, oh, I don't feel like doing it. 
you know, no one's going to take that as a good excuse. So I always felt like I had to to make up something. And then you're just like lying just as like self-preservation. But I also really hate lying and don't want to be someone who tells lies. So it was really um, complicated. (laughs) Anyway, so I have done this before with her. And eventually I did talk to her about it. I admitted everything. And then I told her that now that I have told her this and she knows, I don't feel like I have to lie, so I'm not going to. Because there's no reason that I have to, right? And I haven't. (laughs) I got back a surprisingly terse reply, and she said she'd be in touch to reschedule. Which is already a little odd, because usually when I reschedule, she at least does it like, sometime that day. But again, I know she's really busy. I'm not going to push it. She says she's going to get in touch with me. So I wait. She never did. (laughs) Now, this exact thing has happened before, and it only happens when she's mad. Normally, she will tell me what she has open that day or the week or whatever. I understand that there could be other reasons for these things, but I'm hypervigilant and I notice patterns. And like I said, this exact thing has happened before, which is rough. It really set off uh, a lot of alarm bells for me because it's the exact same thing that my mother would do. And it's not just that. Things have been kind of weird lately. She's been really pushing a treatment that she just learned about, and I am not into it. She had me try it once, and I didn't do it correctly, but she didn't tell me that. But because of the hypervigilance, I could tell that I wasn't doing something right, but she wouldn't tell me what it was. And I, you know, I'm never going to (laughs) ask because that's uncomfortable. I don't know. But yeah, so she never told me what to actually do. So I kept doubling down on trying to do it right, but was doing it completely wrong. And I was at such a heightened state. So my inner perfectionist was just like panicking. (laughs) I just kept trying harder and harder. And then at the end of the session, she admitted that I had been doing it wrong. And it was incredibly upsetting and re-traumatizing for sure, because the idea was that I was supposed to be outside of the event watching, and I had just put myself fully back in it um, and experienced it all over again. And it messed me up for a long time. Honestly, I think it kind of set off this last, like, slow descent into the darkness, and that is not cool. (laughs) I still don't feel like I've entirely gotten myself back. And I've told her that I don't want to do this this treatment, and she just keeps pushing it. Or she did until my mental health went bad, and then we had to deal with that instead. So like I've said a few times, I think that she might be overworked. I have spent Half of the time, lately, reminding her of what we have talked about before. She also spends long stretches of time telling me about her daughter and her daughter's mental health, which, like, I am not comfortable with. I don't know her daughter, thankfully, but I'm just not comfortable with that. She was also really fond of saying, oh, I'd only say this to you. And she also liked to tell me how hardworking I was and how I was her best client. Um... Those kinds of things are majorly triggering for me. And we have discussed this over and over. I mean, I've been seeing her for five years. She knows all of it, you know? And in the past couple of weeks, she has done three of my major triggers. And not in a, like a therapeutic way, in what feels like a passive-aggressive, just-like-my-mother sort of way. And it's all just been too strange and too uncomfortable. Which is a bummer because that is not at all how therapy should feel. I, and I know that healing can be uncomfortable, but like this is different. This isn't my stuff. This is like a weird, a weirdness. I don't know. But here's what I realized. And here's the positive. She did all of those things, some of my major, major triggers. And I was able to take note of those things and then not react. I was able to just kind of calmly be like, oh, I'm having this response and not have it really, you know, because I was aware. I also don't know that I necessarily need to delve into every horrid moment from my past. 
It was all so continual and subtle and confusing. But I get it now. You know, um, I know what's underneath everything. I know that everything they told me was wrong. And I'm even beginning to get to know who I truly am. And at this point, I want to move forward. I feel like I have become way too focused on healing, and that involves always being in the past, always being in the pain, always being in my head, and I'm just kind of over it. I want to live my life. I want to grow. I want to enjoy myself. I just feel like something has shifted. I've been working to make healthier choices, and I feel like I really have actually pulled myself out of the muck, and I'm beginning to feel ready for life again which is kind of incredible because it has been years. It has been years. It's been a really long time. (laughs) So all that is to say that I am taking a break from therapy and putting much more effort into my work, which is what I enjoy. I just want to be in the moment and live. That never has really seemed like an option before. Like, I always had to be protecting myself, staying safe, staying hidden, whatever, And now I can just, like, be, and I can go and do things and enjoy myself, and it's fine. (laughs) I don't know. This whole thing has been so strange. I kind of always thought that I would be in therapy forever. Um, I really believed that I was an unfixable mess. And I used to read stories of people being ghosted by their therapists, and I would think, like, how horrible and painful that would be. And I find that I really don't care. I feel like I'm ready to stand on my feet again, and honestly, it kind of feels like a relief. I think the slowing down of my work and my progress was really weighing on me because I wasn't being that, like, superstar client, super hardworking. You know, I just kind of viewed myself as a failure because I wasn't overachieving, which is, you know, how I've always done things, not healthy. But I think, like, I really only had so much healing that I needed to do and that maybe I'm just ready to move on. It does make me a little sad that she just ghosted me, but um, it's not like I haven't been here before. (laughs) And I'll be okay. Luckily, I know that I will be okay. I also assume that I will probably go back to therapy at some point, but I think I will need to find someone else when that time comes. For now, I feel like this really is the best choice, and I think I'm ready. So now for something a little more uplifting. I have been listening to this great podcast called The ADHD Entrepreneur by Carrie Out Loud. You can find her on Instagram, and I think she's also on YouTube as well now. She discusses ADHD in women and how you can apply it to business in positive and productive ways. It's a really fantastic show. And she is a wonderful host. On one of her recent episodes, she was talking about flipping the script and using the things that we usually see as detrimental about ADHD and anxiety and finding the usefulness in our fabulous neurospicy qualities. She commented about how we can rewrite the stories we've always been told, including the ones that we've told ourselves. And that idea is just so freeing. I highly recommend that you check out the ADHD Entrepreneur and check out Carrie Out Loud on Instagram. It's Carrie with a K. She's fantastic and tons of great information. So that's all for this week, lovelies. I hope you have a wonderful week and get to be truly present and enjoy some of life's beautiful moments. I hope your therapist doesn't ghost you unless you're ready. And of course, I hope you find your purse. If Rap Media Production.